It's a long one today, and it's super rich. Uh, but today, I uh, just want to pull up the fact that uh, in today's gospel, Jesus is confronted with a question as to why there's evil. Here's a blind man. Whose fault is it? Why did this happen? Who sinned, him or his parents? And Jesus doesn't answer the question. It's an important question for you and I. Why is there evil? Why do bad things happen? There's uh, something about uh, this question that maybe, maybe it happens in our hearts more than we realize. Um, we are very quick to want to find blame. Heck, you know, I, I, fortunately I don't have a very long commute when I go to work living right here uh, but the few times that I do get to drive in traffic uh, I realize why this comes up in confession so often <laughs> it's just there's such an instinct to rage like someone does something crazy that almost you know kills people and when you're when you're unsafe when this evil action has been done you j it's rah! so much anger all of a sudden and the temptation is to, to go and get close to this person and find out who the heck's driving. What kind of blind animal? And then, and then you, see, you're, you, you already decided what, it, what you're going to find. You know, you already decided some, some, uh, some crazy person smoking, drinking alcohol, and texting at the same time, you know? And then you just see it's like a 21-year-old who's like trying her best, you know? But we're, we, we're, we're quick to say, ah, it's because, it's because they, he drives a truck. It's those truck drivers, all the truck drivers. Are we want to blame. It's because, of, uh, it's because of smokers. Smokers, they're the worst. Ah. Or it's the Tesla drivers. They're so entitled. We, we, just, we want to like, determine this is why there's evil. It's because of those people. Or it's, it's because of uh, the consequences of those kinds of behaviors. And we know in ourselves that there's, there's, our actions have consequences. Um, we've, we've all had, at some point perhaps, maybe, an experience where there was a misunderstanding with someone we were very close to. And then, all of a sudden, someone I used to talk to frequently no, doesn't, doesn't talk to me anymore. That's a, that's a very painful thing, and, and, I, and I start to wonder, what could I have done differently? What happened? Why did this happen? Who sinned? Was it, was it them or me? So what does Jesus do in the face of these things? Even the world is, it can get pretty serious, too. Uh, then you start to think about uh, people who... Uh, have experienced actual trauma. It's absolutely extraordinary to hear of, 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 of people who, as adults, struggling with certain behaviors, uh, either you know, the, certain circumstances, like being in a large crowd triggers them, and they have a nervous breakdown in large crowds. Or there's certain things that cause extreme and unhealthy anxiety. Or that they're compulsive to alcohol or internet use. And they've come to discover that the things that they don't like in their behavior as adults has roots in, a, in an experience, an evil that occurred as a child. Uh, women who are aware of these deep struggles they're having today because of the harm that they experienced as a young girl at the hands of family members, a father or a cousin. How does God respond to that kind of evil? Okay, I, I could go on and on, because you and I know that there is plenty of evil. And we, we want to be able to blame somebody. But let's take the example of someone who experienced trauma at a young age. If you finally get the help and hopefully everybody who has trauma gets the help 
to see more clearly. What do we gain by finding out why? In finding out why, okay, it's, it's his fault, it's that man's fault that I have these struggles today. Okay, the benefit is not that you found out that it's his fault. What, what are you going to do? You can't undo what has been done. What's striking is that Jesus, in the face of why did this bad thing happen, in this case, in today's gospel, a blind man. What's interesting is Jesus' response kind of leads us to... uh, He kind of is leading us away from that question, why did this happen? And more towards who he is, who responded. More important than the trauma that occurred is the love that responds to it. It's amazing to see people experience God's love when they see the evil that they're experiencing in certain therapy sessions and and then bring into pastoral counseling. I've seen this repeatedly. When people start to kind of see their story a little bit more clearly, they see the harm that they've been carrying and realize that this shame or this wound has been dictating a lot of their behavior. Now seeing the wound, they bring Jesus into it and it changes everything. When you experience this immense love that God has for you in your woundedness, oh, my friends, it sets you free. It sets you free from the, the guilt uh, that one carries that can be so oppressive that's ultimately based on, on a lie. Lent, my friends, is a time to be free. Free from the things that keep us from God. True freedom isn't being able to do what you want, when you want, how you want. True freedom is the capacity to do the right things that God is calling you to do today. Just today. I don't know about tomorrow. Today. Being free is being able to do what God is asking of me today. If I carry around the questions of a why, whose fault was it, you're going to be miserable. But if you start to notice, what is God's response? It's such a beautiful passage today that Jesus takes mud. <laughs> it's, it's a weird kind of gross image, I guess, that Jesus spits in, in the dirt, forms mud, and anoints the blind man's eyes. And then tells him to go wash in a specific pool. Be, if, you, if you kind of look past some of the initial awkwardness of that, it's amazing that Jesus wants to come close and touch. Something very vulnerable, something from within him, he wants it to touch us. Where we're wounded, where we're blind. And that's true for everyone here. Jesus' Jesus's response to the evils that anger you He wants to come close and touch. Bring his love there. The things in your life that have caused wounds that lead you to compulsive behaviors, compulsive anger, compulsive lust, compulsive pleasure, Jesus wants to go close to that and touch it. A good friend of mine, I had, I had dinner last night with a friend of mine that was in, in seminary. I haven't seen this guy in, in almost 10 years. He's a priest. He's, he's a guy. He's a priest. He's a good man. He's a guy. And he was sharing with me how there's this a friend of ours who now started a religious order. And a, a male, he's a part of, sorry, he didn't start it. He joined the religious order that one of the founders worked with Mother Teresa. And at one point, this person was talking to Mother Teresa about poverty and how Mother Teresa saw poverty. What did she understand that to be? Especially when she talked about spiritual poverty. Because Mother Teresa said, the greatest poverty in the world is Americans. Wealthy, successful Americans, they're, they're the poorest of the poor because they've lost their connection to God. They're spiritually poor. So somebody was asking her, what, what do you mean by that? Mother Teresa's response was, 
Uh, oh, 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 when she was talking about praying, asking, bringing your poverty to Jesus. She says, bringing your poverty to Jesus, this interior poverty, is bringing to Jesus the things you're running away from. To share your poverty with Jesus is to bring to Jesus the things you're running away from. Every alcoholic will tell you that they turn to alcohol because there's a, a pain that they're running from or an insecurity that they're running from. All of us are, are addicted to sin. And we need to ask ourselves with Jesus' help to see clearly, what am I running away from? Because what's most important isn't knowing why I have these wounds, but what is Jesus going to do? Who is he going to be for me in that place of woundedness? And then what can I do about it? What will I do about it? Will I bring this to Jesus or will I keep running away from it? Will I face it? So my, a little encouragement today is to consider this. When Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, he's inviting us to be his disciples. And the imagery of a yoke is, is what a beast of burden carries, what a, an ox would have on its shoulders when they're dragging farming equipment. And uh, so it's an imagery, perhaps, where we're thinking of taking on the burdens that Jesus takes on, to be like him, to bear our cross like Jesus does. But what's interesting, perhaps, to consider is that maybe he's also thinking, maybe the image is of a double yoke, the yoke where you have two oxen, and the big piece of yoke that's over both of their shoulders so that they can carry farming equipment. So perhaps when Jesus invites us to be his disciples, not only is he asking us to do the things he does, to bear our crosses like he does, but to share the yoke, to take on his yoke, like a double yoke, which when you then have the yoke on your shoulders that he has by your side, you now start to have his perspective. the spiritual blindness that we want healing from so we might see clearly in the face of evil. Today in this Mass, we can ask Jesus, help me to see things your way. I want the grace to be humble enough to put on your yoke, be with you shoulder to shoulder to see what you see, to take your perspective in the face of evil. And there, facing the struggles and wounds, I might see your glory right here in my life.